I just want you to know that that little clip that you just watched, that took me about two hours to edit and get that together. So I could have just did a little B-roll clip of like a coffee mug on the table and added some sound effects and all that. But Terry Warfield went the extra mile for y'all. I hope you enjoyed that because I might do it again if you do. Let me know in the comments. But anyways, tight shirt Terry back in the building today with another tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show y'all how to make some dope speed ramps. Now you might wonder, Terry, what is a speed ramp? And ha ha, class is in session. The speed ramp is when the video clip goes from maybe slow to fast to slow, or fast to slow to fast, or maybe a combination between all of them. And the first thing you probably say is, Terry, I can just get a video clip and cut it up, and I can do one part slow, one part fast, and one part slow. And my response is, first of all, shut up because you're right. But second of all, the difference between doing that and the speed ramp is with a speed ramp, you get a gradual increase or decrease in speed. So it's almost like the video has like a momentum to it or a weight to it. Say it together, a momentum to it. It's almost like the video has a momentum to it. So that's what I'm going to show you all how to do now. To make this effect work, and this is, by the way, one of my favorite creative tricks that I love using, y'all know I'm the slow-mo king. To make this work, there's a few things that you need. First of all, you need your favorite video editing software. Now, in this video, we're gonna do Final Cut Pro. So if you are a Premiere user or a DaVinci user or an Avid user, I'm sorry, but you are what? Because this video is for Final Cut Pro users. But you need something that can film in a higher frame rate. Now, we want to go at least 60 frames a second, if possible, 120 frames a second, 240. Actually, the more frames per second you can film in, the more dramatic you can make your speed ramp. But you want to shoot for a minimum of 60 frames a second, and that will give you enough data to be able to slow clips down, speed them up, slow them down, without having to use optical flow or anything like that in Final Cut Pro, which you can do that too. Optical flow does work on some video clips, but let's go ahead and hop into Final Cut Pro Pro, and I'm going to show you how to do speed ramps. It's real easy, and then we'll also talk about the video you just watched because there's some little extra things that I added to it to make the video, you know, saucy for you. And I'm going to teach y'all some of them tricks. Let's get it. All right, y'all. So I got Final Cut Pro open, and the first thing I want to do is give y'all kind of like a timeline view to show you what really went on. So with this video idea, like I said, I wanted to make it just a little something more interesting to watch versus just like a cup on the table or something like that. And the idea of it was to have this drone delivering this payload and the payload was the speed ramp, right? So the, the drone is following the car, right? The drone is following the car, we right here. And as it's going, it finds the target, which is the car, and then it delivers the speed ramp, which is the quote unquote payload or missile. And then afterwards, we get into the tutorial. So I hope I hope that made sense to you. But real quick, I want to play this just so you can kind of see it on the screen and visualize everything. Then we'll break it down and then we'll get into the actual editing of the speed ramp of how I did it. So this is already pre-edited. This is already done. I just want to show y'all real quick. Let me go ahead and play this. So yeah, I think that came out dope. But anyways, a few technical tips real quick. So for the drone shots, I use the Mavic Air 2. That's this bad baby right here. I use that. I don't know if you can see it. It's probably overexposed, but I use the Mavic Air 2. I just had it tracking the car. And then for the actual clips of the car, I filmed this with my Sony a7S III at 120 frames per second. The music, everything is from Epidemic Sound. If y'all need sound effects and all of that stuff, 
I'm gonna drop a link in the description and also in the pinned comment of this video. You can sign up for free for a 30 day trial and test out everything on there. And it covers you for the entire time you had a trial. And then if you like it, you can just keep it. If not, you can just cancel it. I should say most of these sounds came from Epidemic Sound because I did have to scour the internet for a few of them. I had to, you know, get the sound effects like the radio chatter and stuff like that to sell it. Anyways, before we move forward, if you like this video so far, please give it a thumbs up, man. Y'all don't know how important that little thumbs up right there is. And also, subscribe if you haven't. And shout out to the fam if y'all came back. I really appreciate y'all. Let's get into the tutorial. So, where is the speed ramp at? So, the speed ramp, as you see, let me turn the music down. The speed ramp is right here, okay? So, this blue part, orange part, blue part, orange part. Let me expand this. As you can see right here, the blue part is at 175%. The slow parts are at 20%. The blue part is at 175%. And the slow part again is at 20%. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this clip, all right? And I'm gonna paste it over here just to show y'all and I'm gonna reset it and then we can do it together. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna hit reset speed. Now that puts it back to 100%. And Final Cut Pro, you can hit this button right here which is the retime button and hit automatic speed. What that'll do is Final Cut will figure out how many frames per second that is, and also the type of timeline you have it on, and it'll automatically calculate how slow that clip can be without having to skip frames. So in this case, because we're on a 24p timeline, we filmed it in 120 frames per second, yo, now we can do 20%, which is super slow. So once we have our clip slowed down i typically like to go through it match it up with the music to figure out where i want the speed ramp to start once i have it figured out which is over here so again i'm not gonna you know go through and redo this part because i already got it timed up with the music but let's just say right here it's coming from behind the tree this is where i want my speed ramp to start what i'm gonna do next is press shift plus b shift plus b will insert a speed ramp so once you got the first point, then you have to go on and find your second point. So let's just say my second point is right here. Example sake, I'm gonna press Shift B again. And now you see I have a tail on this end, I have a tail on this end. So now that I have this all split up, the way I want it to be split up, I'm gonna go to the middle section and I'm gonna press this drop down carrot right here and go to custom, okay? Now for this part, I'm gonna put it at like, maybe like 375. And you see automatically how it takes the slow part in the middle and it speeds it up. Now again, while this is rendering, you could do this either way. So for the first clip, you can have it go fast and in the middle clip, you can have it go super slow. And then the end of it, you can have it speed back out or you could go slow, fast, slow. It depends on however you wanna do it. And you can also insert more speed ramps into this if you want to by you know, scrubbing down the timeline further and pressing shift B again and doing the same thing. So this is what we got, super slow. Here comes the fast speed, boom! And then super slow again. So that's how you do it. So if we wanted to reverse it, like we just talked about, I'm gonna command Z all the way out. And I wanna find, like maybe right here, Shift B, go Shift B right here. So for this one, at the beginning of the speed ramp, I'm gonna speed it up, slow it down, and then speed it up. So all I'm gonna do is go in here and change this to like, Let's just do like 375 on this part. Let's go to custom, 370, 50, 375. And we'll take this one and go 375 too. Why didn't my first one stick? All right, let's redo that, 375. So for this one, we doing the opposite. Instead of going slow, fast, slow, like I just talked about, now we're going fast, slow, fast. You'll get real good at this the more you do it. You'll be able to kind of eyeball what parts you want fast at what speed and stuff like that. But just to show you real quick, this one is gonna come in real fast. It's gonna go slow and it's gonna speed back out. So here we go. Boom! Super slow. Oh, there was a keyframe on there. That's why I did that. We'll talk about that in one second. Then it's gonna speed back out. Now let's just say I wanted to insert another speed ramp. The only thing I would do is go further down the clip and then press Shift B again and boom, I got another speed ramp in there. I'm gonna back out of that. So you get the gist. That's how you create the speed ramp. Now once you have the speed ramp, I'm gonna delete this one and we're gonna go back over here to this one because there's a couple things that you need to do 
to sell it, right? Oh, oh, one thing I forgot to show you real quick before we move on. So these gray bars right here, these determine how fast or slow the speed ramp actually comes on. So I'm sure somebody was gonna ask that question. If you shorten these gray bars, what happens is the speed ramp comes on much more sharp. So instead of it being a super slow gradual speed ramp, it'll get up to that gray bar and then the speed ramp happens much, much quicker. So you can go through and mess with that tailor it to your liking. It's super easy to do. All you do is grab the edge of the gray bar and you either move it in or you move it out. You, you shrink it or you, you lengthen it. And that determines how fast or slow the speed ramp comes on. Now that we have our speed ramps, there's a few things that I think you need to do to sell your freaking speed ramp because what's the speed ramp without all the dramatics, right? So what I did for this part is I used swooshes. Now you can get swooshes off of Epidemic. Uh, these are just swooshes that I've had in my library for who knows how long the music like the the overlays for sound effects the security camera music sound effect right there that stuff came from epidemic sound the swooshes what they do is they kind of give the speed ramp dimension right so I'm gonna play it without the swoosh and then I'm gonna add the swoosh back in just so you can see like what the difference is let me turn the music off also okay so here's the speed ramp without the swoosh. Okay, so now let me play it with the swoosh on there. You see that? Now let's go to the other one because the other one is even more dramatic. So let me turn off this sound effect and then let me play this one without the swoosh. And then let me play it with the swoosh. it sells the effect completely different. So if you wanna do speed ramps, I highly, highly encourage you to add sound effects because sound effects will make your speed ramp seem much more organic versus, I don't know, it's just something about the, you know, the, the whatever you wanna call it, add the freaking sound effects, okay? Now, the other thing that you might wonder is, Terry, what is this right here? That is an adjustment layer, okay? I have a tutorial where I'm showing how to do like basic level color correction and color grading. That adjustment layer is how I added my custom look, which is, I think I used my own drama LUT for this particular video. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. Let me go up here. Yeah, I used drama. So I'll show you what this looked like without my LUT on there, which you can grab below. I mean, you know, I gotta plug my own products, right? You get eight LUTs in that pack. Now these are not corrective LUTs, they are just film looks, so they just give a look. They don't convert from like S-Log and all that stuff. But if y'all wanna copy them and support, the link is down there. Look how basic this looks without the color on there, right? Even if we go to this clip, look how basic that looks. So all I did was got an adjustment layer, put it right on top. If you go watch that color grading video and click on the little card in that video, there's a link where you can download the adjustment layers for free. Trust me in Final Cut Pro because they don't come with them native. It will save your life. But all I did is turn that back on and look at that dramatic effect that it gave us. So again, that LUT is called Drama. I use this LUT in basically all of my videos. It is my favorite LUT out of all of the LUTs that I created. I love using Drama. But that is how you speed ramp and Final Cut Pro. So obviously you wanna do this where it fits, you don't wanna overdo it, but it is one of my favorite effects that I use in my creative arsenal, my bag of tricks and stuff for editing. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope you found it helpful. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell and let me know what y'all thought about this tutorial down in the comments. So that's all I got for you. It's late, I'm tired. I'm about to go to bed. Peace and chicken grease. I'm out, Terry Warfield. Peace!